Here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it. It's an every kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the Tom Like You Show. We appreciate it. Coming up, Sarah Jessica Parker. Tops Maxim's Unsexiest Women's List. Not women's list, women list. Sarah Jessica Parker at the top of Maxim's. Unsexiest woman list. And we'll have her reaction coming up, but first let's check in with the Fox Newsroom and see what's going on. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here. Uh, but uh... All right, uh, we'll get back to Bill in just a few minutes. Anyway, Sarah Jessica Parker was at the top of Maxim's unsexiest women woman list. Why can't I get that right? <laughs> I guess because the list has the unsexiest women on it. But she was voted unsexiest woman. And uh, she has finally reacted to that. We'll have her reaction coming up. But first, this from the Fox Newsroom. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka. And uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little... Uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here. Uh, but uh, thank, thank you for that, Bill. We'll get back to you when you get your act together. Anyway, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker is at the top of Maxim's unsexiest woman list. They did a list. I did they do a poll? I will find out here. But um, she has reacted, and her reaction is coming up right after this from Fox News. Fox News Radio. I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, What's going on over there? Last time we carry a newscast, people ask, how come you don't have news on your show? Well... That's what you get. <laughs> anyway. Sarah Jessica Parker won the title Maxim's Unsexiest Woman. And, according to this story here, she is finally biting back, saying, quote, My impression is that what they find sexy doesn't make them interesting or unusual, or special. That makes them common. <laughs> well, if by being common you mean we are the majority. And by the way, why do you assume, Sarah Jessica, that this means that we, uh, we like airbrushed women? Maybe we just like hot women. Regardless of whether they're airbrushed. Um, my opinion, Sarah Jessica is way past her expiration date at 42. A very nice person. I've met her, but that has nothing to do with her hotness. 42. And... uh 
to my eyes, looks anorexic. And may I say, uh, a two-bagger, at best. <laughs> at best. Hey, Tom, uh, just got off the phone with uh, Fox News. They, yes. I, I don't know what's going on over there, but they say Bill's ready now. Um, is Bill ready now? Yeah, All I don't right, know. It really uh, sounds funky over there, but they say Bill's ready. All right, let's go yeah. to the latest now from the Fox News room. <laughs> Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. I, I, there I, actually is a, a newscast here. I guess, I guess I'm going to have to uh, call but, uh, over there again. I, I, I don't think he's ready. They told me he was ready that time, so I'm going to have Dean get on it this time. That That's, I think, part of the problem. What are you doing having a guinea call in a newsroom? Jesus. Anyway, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker says she is not offended by being told she is not sexy. When she first found out she had won the title, the Sex of the City actress thought, my God, I'm the unsexiest woman in the world. She said my instinct was that it felt personal. It was really about, we don't like her. Who were the judges and critics? I would like to ask them, what exactly is it that you find personally not sexy about me? Is it my figure? And then here it comes. Is it my brain that bothers you? I tell you what, if you were hot, your brain would be just fine. But you're not. says here, Parker insists that she is not worried about the title. In fact, the woman who dated heartthrobs John F. Kennedy Jr., Robert Downey Jr., says she practically invites it, saying, that's the beauty of this country, America. We can, we can have different opinions and coexist and be amused by each other and hurt and offended. Oh, my goodness. You know, let me just say this. I am amazed at how women try to put the best spin on things, like telling somebody she's not sexy. Oh, you're afraid of me. You're intimidated by me. It must be my brain you're intimidated by. Darling, if you had any brains at all, you'd shut up. And you know why you'd shut up? I'm going to tell you why. What Maxim wanted was to get under your skin and to get you to talk about Maxim, which you did. Your audience isn't guys anyway. You don't pose for Playboy. You're, you're not some supermodel, you know, doing uh, photo shoots on the beach in Brazil. Your audience is dumpy, chunky housewives who think you're somehow sophisticated or that you're in some way like the character you played on that TV show, Sex of the City. Just play to that audience. You know, do billboards for, I don't know, a Dove moisturizer or that thing that's supposed to make your thighs not look so chunky. Or, uh, you know, uh, whatever fashion uh, projects you got going on or shoes. Where are they selling your shoes, by the way? Payless? Kmart, Sears, <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just saying. Like, what I do here is I play to my audience. If Cosmopolitan said I was the unsexiest man alive, I would be thrilled because it would mean that I was on their radar. I would be thrilled. I would say, throw more mud at me, please. I would not be on the air promoting Cosmo. I would enjoy the fact that somebody cared enough about me to paint me with that brush. Someone called me the world's um, biggest misogynist. I don't know that that's true. But at least it would mean that somebody cared enough to send the very best by taking shots at me and publicizing their shots. 
I think it would be fantastic. I mean, why would Sarah Jessica Parker be upset about this? She's not sexy. She's over the hill. She's past her expiration date. And by the way, forget the airbrushing. What about that schnoz, dear? Come on. I mean, uh, Maxim has not requested that you appear in a bikini because, let's face it, if you ever had a time, it passed a long time ago. Anybody uh, got a problem with this? Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. What's at the base of all of this, you know, uh, banging chicks? It's like, it's kind of a biological urge. What's at the base of eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day? <laughs> okay, all right. It's the Tom Likas Show. Before we get to your calls with Sarah Jessica Parker, we have uh, Bill Vitka here now in the Fox News room. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, Where is it? Where's the newscast? All right, we'll get back to that. One eight hundred five eight hundred. tom is our telephone number. Javier on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you, Tom? Do you care? Oh, I care, man. You saved my life. Really? I have so many friends that are, you know, screwed up their life by having kids and getting married to the first girl they have the kid to. And I'm single, going to Japan in June, going to be getting more ass in the toilet seat. Love that. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. So, yeah, regarding the subject, man, I don't know what she's doing on TV, too. I mean, yeah, she might be smart and everything, but, man, if I had that money, I'd be getting me some plastic surgery for that schnoz. <laughs> Every time I see her on TV, I'm like, you know. See, this is this is what I find amazing. Sarah Jessica Parker is another one of those women, like Meg Ryan and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. These are all women who are way over the hill. But when you ask women who they think the sexiest women are, they always pick the non-threatening, non-sexy, aging types. You will notice there are no Brazilian supermodels on women's list of who the sexiest women are. You know, they'll pick uh, Raquel Welsh, who's like 68 years old, instead of picking uh, somebody who's young in their prime and really hot. So Sarah Jessica Parker has joined that crowd along with Meg Ryan. You know, women that no man under 50 would touch, okay? But that women say, oh, yeah, she's so sexy. Because women, I think, want to, there to be hope for the future. And most of these women are not even as good looking as Sarah Jessica Parker, okay? And they're hoping that when they are 42, they can look that good. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, thank you, Javier. Well, all right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. It's not like you ran out of gas there. We squeezed all the juice out of Javier we could get. Then he didn't know where to go from there. And do I say something else? Do I repeat everything I just said? What do I do now? Do I ask if Bill Vitka's ready in the Fox News room? Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> I, it must be terrible to be all uh, confused like that. You're on a radio network. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Good afternoon. Hi, Chris. 
I was just calling to agree with you on the Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker bit. And as your screener helped me, I couldn't remember the name of the movie, but uh, it was Lonely Guy. I think that was her prime. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Was it Lonely Guy or was it L.A. Story you're thinking of? I, I can't remember the name of it. The one with the, the billboard? Yeah, and, that was L.A. Story. Well, he was trying to help me out. I guess he didn't help me out too much. I thought uh, I, was, I thought Dean was an encyclopedia of knowledge about movies. Well, he didn't have that one, apparently. Well, that was before his golden age of movies. Was that that movie was made before Goodfellas? <laughs> but I, I so he wouldn't know about that. Best. What's that? I would say cute at best. Cute and, at best. And my constant question is, uh, why do they keep putting Jack Skellington on television? Uh, that's what Jer uh, Sarah Jessica Parker really looks like to me. <laughs> you know what? I mean, in her prime, she was a two-bagger. Like, good body, butterface. It was, it was all right. Did you ever look into that face and go, oh, my God, I'm getting hot? <laughs> well, yeah. You did? For, what's that? Did you? Did I what? <laughs> This is painful. I'm sorry, I totally missed that. Sounds like you're out back smoking with uh, the news guy. Um, <laughs> whatever he was doing, I don't know. Uh, I, I asked you if you ever looked into that face and said, oh, my God, I'm getting hot. Um, no, that I looked into that face say, oh, my God, uh, yeah. what's she doing on television? Yeah, see, that's my point. I think in her prime, she was a, she was a butterface. Yeah, but butterfaces have their place too, just not television. <laughs> yes, um, in their bed in the dark, eleven p.m. when you're drunk and nobody else will answer the phone. That's where the butterfaces' place is. <laughs> yeah, I can I can agree with and that. And never in your bed. Well, maybe sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. All right, see you appreciate later, the call. Yeah. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Man, I, I think you're a little off base on a few of these gals. I, I, I got to agree. Gals? That how old are you? Gals. 40. 40. 40, man. You call them gals? Yeah. I still call them gals. That's, Girls, that's how you know they're old. Do you, do you call an 18-year-old a gal? Yeah. You do? Yeah, when you're from the Midwest, you call them. Gals. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> hey, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I gotta agree, Sarah Jessica, she's pretty rough. But they're like Michelle Pfeiffer. You can't knock this gal. She looked better probably ten years ago or fifteen, but she still looks pretty damn good. Well, she's. I, I believe she's over fifty. Uh, she may be. She may be. 50. All right. Well, uh, come on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you're saying why not pick like Brazilian? From suit and all the stuff, right? The problem, well, the problem is nobody knows them. I oh, mean, if come on, I know them. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do you, know, you know my name? Don't you read Sports Illustrated? For God's sake! I might look at the pictures, but I don't remember the name. Oh, you know, I mean, you, can you name a few of these Brazilian models? I mean, no, but if I them. saw pictures of the models and I saw a picture of uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer or Sarah Jessica Parker, I could tell you how I would pick. Yeah, but they're they're going to pick somebody that people know. They're not going to pick. All right, so you're saying they pick Sarah Jessica Parker? Uh, well, or they pick Michelle Pfeiffer to be on like women would pick her to be on their most beautiful list because they don't know the names of the Brazilian supermodels. You're telling me women would put Brazilian supermodels on the list, but they don't know their names. I think that's why they pick them. Cause well, why don't they, they put you know Beyonce on the list, or why don't they put uh, uh, well, yeah, I, the hottest of the hot? I think Beyonce hits the list sometimes. She's, you know, she's uh, not, not. No, she hits the list that, of guys with uh, guys' preferences. Women put Meg Ryan and Michelle Pfeiffer and Sarah Jessica Parker. I think I don't know. I kind of disagree. I think universally, like Beyonce is pretty pretty known to be pretty darn beautiful. I agree with that, but the point is, I'm, I'm not talking about whether she's known as being beautiful. I think she is beautiful. Not uh, not just beautiful, but you know. Tent pitching beautiful, okay? I, I'm, I, what I'm talking about is when they ask women and they ask men, who are the hottest women? 
Men put 10 hot women in their late teens, early 20s. Women put Meg Ryan, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, okay. I, I got to agree with them that. It's probably true. Probably true. Jesus. They're, yeah, they're, they're probably picking somebody right they can aspire to in a few years. Or uh, they're, they're just hoping that one day when they're Michelle Pfeiffer's age, they can look that good. Yeah. No, that's probably true. I mean, it's pretty tough to compare a 20 year old to a 40 year old. I, I, you know, I can't argue that at all. You know. Right. You'd prefer a 20 year old, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't get a 20 year old, but I prefer it. But you would prefer one if you could get one. Ah, uh, you know, probably not. So, you know, you, and I know you, how you feel about this thing, but you got to talk to them. You know, I, I don't, I wouldn't get one. Why do you have to talk to them? Ah, uh, I, just getting them for the sake. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do have to talk to them. You have to say, um, there's a good taxi service, Beverly Hills oh, Cab, uh, 273. No, yeah, you give them the phone number of the cab company no, and no, other could, conversation you could make. Tom, I, I got I to gotta tell you, you know, it, it, that does get old. I think it does. I mean, I'll just say like Michelle you, Pfeiffer. Huh? I know your philosophy and, and stuff, but I did that for a lot of years, and it, it got pretty empty, pretty old. Well, funny, I, I'm not the least bit bothered by it. I know. I know. I know. Your I completely okay. love it. Yeah, but being with hot chicks. Oh, yeah. It's it's kind of a nowhere after a while, though. You know. You Where does it need to go? Huh? That's like. Do you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day? You bet. Every day. Yeah. Breakfast every morning. Well, lunch every noontime, and then sure. every night dinner. Yeah. Where, where is it all survival going, survival. Steve? Steve, where is it all going? It's for survival. That's a different. So situation. is sex. No, it's not. Guys yeah. need sex. That's why you have a sexual urge. You need to have it. You need to go to the bathroom. You need to breathe. You need to drink water. You need to eat. You need sex. Yeah, but you can. You it can doesn't do have to that. go anywhere. You know what? As long as I'm getting my my minimum daily requirement, I'm fine. You can do without sex. You I don't do really care who it's coming from. I just want to get it. How much? How often? I mean, what's you know? As much as I as as much as I want or need. So if you could get it ten times a day, twenty times a day, that's if fine. if I wanted it and I could, yeah. And by the way, there are days, there are days that I wanted ten times. Yes, there are. I, I I'll give you credit. You must have a hell of a sex drive for uh, to want ten. Or so what you're times. telling me is now that you have no sex drive anymore, you're perfectly happy to settle for your average. Middle of the road wife. Well, no, I'm saying that you don't. You know, I, I don't want it. I probably wouldn't want it ten times a day. I really wouldn't. But you know? again, you have a decreased sex drive, so now you're ready to fall in love and have it mean something. No, I just think you know, if you had a couple, it's you know, if you have a couple. Of now times, that you're bored with sex, you can now settle into a, a boring, meaningless relationship with somebody that has not much to say, and you've heard it all before. Oh, well, you gotta have. So you that, you gotta talk to the talk to the girl I, I i think i mean what do you talk about with your wife i talk about everything we talk about politics really what does oh. she know about politics she knows quite a bit i know more she so does. she's not that attractive then huh so she's not that attractive then my wife's pretty attractive she's not she's not a 10 but she's pretty darn she's attractive. not a nine she's not an eight well, probably eight. but she's probably she's, not a seven huh probably not a seven well, she's probably an eight, you know, but she's she's sharp. You know, it's like it's like I always tell the guys: no guy grew up wanting to drive a Toyota Corolla. Most guys drew, grew up wanting to drive a Maserati. Sure, but the, but most guys do drive a Toyota Corolla because that's all they can get. Yeah. Okay. I, I, and same thing with women. You wanted to drive a Maserati, but one day you realized well, I'm yeah, never going mean, to get one. Well, I I still you know I mean, you know it may be bad, but I still I still look to talk to the you know I. Want to talk to him, carry a conversation with the woman, you know, with my wife or whoever it might be. You know, you, it's what for? There. Huh? Do you, do you talk to a urinal when you're done using it? <laughs> Don't talk to my urinal very much. What though. a relief! Oh, I'm so glad you were there when uh, I needed you. <laughs> and then when I was done, you were gushing. <laughs> no, nah, I, you know, I don't know. You, you know, I don't think you require that. Urinal now. cake? What? Now, I'm saying what you might say to a urinal when you were done using it. Well, that's a different situation. Would you like no. a urinal cake? How about a nice say no to drugs urinal cake after that? Would you like that? <laughs> nope. 
Yeah, well, if you're comparing your real you know, a woman to a urinal, that's you know that's that's what you're gonna get. Well, they they really have a lot in common. <laughs> what a urinal, a woman? Absolutely. Why? What is that? Well, they're a good place to uh, deposit bodily fluids. They both get pissed off. No. And and finally, uh, the the bottom line is that uh, you know if you've seen one piece of porcelain, you've seen another. Ah, uh, you're you're off base there, Tom. I tell you, I've been with dumb women. I've been with intelligent women. I've taken intelligent women all day long. You must have a very low sex drive. It's uh, that's so sex drive. How often do you have but, sex? Huh? How often do you have sex? Probably three times a week. Ooh, boy, what a stud. Well, you know, I mean, I don't know what I don't know what the average is, but I bet that's probably right about the average. Or no, it's the average for boring married people who have uh, nothing going on in their lives anymore. Well, maybe the average for married people. I was boring, you know, boring married people, just married people in general. Well, that's my point. Those of us who don't get married, our average is a little higher than that. Well, you know, I mean, Tom, you know, I, I hate to bring it up. I know and I've heard your, your thing about your marriages and stuff, but, you know, the, you were married four times. And, yes. And I know that, you know, you say, well, I learned from that. but I did. I know. but The best way to keep a marriage fresh is to do it again every couple of years. But how come it took four times? That's what I wonder. I mean, yeah, what, what does it matter? Well, it does. What does it matter? Because you know what? When I had more of a sex drive than the person I was with, I went out and got it somewhere else. I was never deprived, so, uh, you're and I'm honest right. about it. But you say all the women you're with, none of them had a matching sex drive to yours? So it doesn't matter if they had a matching sex drive. If you're going to be with me, you have to match a lot of things, okay? And the right. fact is, when you have several women, none of them have to match your sex drive. And if they're on the rag, if they're uh, in a cranky mood, if they have a headache, you just call the next one on the list. But that happens with guys. I mean, you, there's times... That you don't feel like having sex, you yeah. know. You may when I don't feel like having sex, I don't call anybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're... the point is, I have sex the way people have a Domino's pizza. When I need it, I get it hot and fresh, and in about thirty minutes. Okay, well, that's fine. You know, so the bottom line is I get it when I want it. Uh, married people love to talk about compromise. We have to compromise. A good relationship is all about compromise. I don't compromise. Well, yeah. I, mean, I get right. what I want when I want it. That's true. You don't, but I do. Well, that's yeah. You know, I guess that's the difference between being single and married. But that's you know. It's I one of the benefits you're... of being unmarried. Yeah, that's true. If I don't feel like talking, I don't call anyone. If I don't feel like having sex, I don't call anyone. Well, okay, that gives you. I've got freedom. a big enough bullpen that if I can't get my middle reliever to come in, I uh, get a late inning relief specialist. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I, I understand that, but or I mean, late at night, I get a closer. I think you, you, you grow then out it's of it. game over. You grow out of it, man. I'll tell you. If you no, if well, pal, pal, I'm older than you. <laughs> you grew out of it. Yeah, well, you know, I think you just you want more. You know, just just going out and having sex with. What's wrong with that? You're knocking it, huh? You're knocking that. I'm knocking it. I think there's more to it than that. I mean, if you just want only if you don't like sex that much. Well, yeah, if it's sex is the only thing in your life. Well, I love sex. No, it's not the only thing in my life, but if I'm going to have a political discussion, I'd rather talk to my buddies. Well, you could talk to, talk to a woman, too. They're not I got friends to talk about politics with. What, are you kidding me? Well, yeah, but you could talk well, I want to talk about politics. My, my, my buddy Chuck, he comes over, he hangs out, has a cup of coffee in my kitchen in the morning about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock. We talk about what's in the newspaper. We talk about what's on television, what's going on CNN. Well, that way, I don't have to waste my time uh, with some mindless broad with big knockers having that conversation. You don't get a mindless broad with big knockers. You get why not? A decent, decent gal that's, that's smart. That you can talk to the issues. No, no, no. Why would I want to talk about the issues with, with my with a sex object? I want to have sex with that person. I don't want to be thinking to myself, "Oh my God, I, I don't like this person's political point of view." Now I don't want to have sex with them. You're still gonna have sex with them. That's you know that's well. Even if you, I'll put it this way. I, I have a lot more sex with women when I don't know what they think or if they have an opinion. I, uh, believe me, I don't want to know. I don't care. Well, that's just like anybody. Do you care about anybody's opinion, you know? Well, probably not, but certainly not any woman I'm having sex with. I mean, the guy comes over, the guy's name was a Chuck, comes over. Do you, do you care about this guy's opinion? Oh, yeah, because Chuck is uh, erudite, uh, articulate, well-read. 
uh, that has, I think, informed political opinions that are somewhat like mine. So we enjoy talking about politics. What, do you talk to the guy because he has opinions matching yours, or, you know, do you argue? I didn't know what his opinions were when I first started talking to him. I just enjoyed talking to him. Yeah, but I... I think you limit yourself. But uh, right there. what do you mean I'm limiting myself? Well, I want to talk to some chick. Why? Why? If I've got valuable time with a chick, why do I waste my time discussing politics when I could be humping and pumping? You can have sex too. It doesn't. You know, you, oh my you know, God! You, you know, call me a cab when you're done having that political conversation. Are you kidding me? How long will it take before you finally get to get get to be in between the sheets? <laughs> it's a crack up. You kill me, Tom. I tell you, you're funny. I enjoy. I, I gotta say, I. I I listen to the show for entertainment. I don't, I don't. Of course, I don't agree with your viewpoints, but uh, you're funny, um, <laughs> outrageous, and you got me listening. I don't agree, with you, so I guess you've well, done your job. That's the important thing. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. All those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that. You know, these girls don't love you. These girls love wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. We started this hour talking about Sarah Jessica Parker and how Max voted her the unsexiest woman. And a list of the unsexiest women. She was number one on the list. Dan, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, you scoffed at that guy for having sex only three times a week. I did. So that means you have more? I do. How does a guy your size, a 50-something-year-old guy, beat the odds and have sex more than... I'm a medical marvel. <laughs> so I guess like that guy that fell from a 40-story building, you were the exception. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about the other guys who are my age. All I know is what I can do. Okay. Well, we uh, work with uh, people of all sorts of ages, and as the body starts to mature, your sex drive also matures. Think of it like a piece of fruit, you know, a, a green piece of fruit when you're a teenager. Even if I wanted develop. less sex, I would still want variety. I happen to believe that the reason people like you are hawking Viagra and Cialis and other uh, uh, erectile dysfunction drugs. There's a lot of money to be made there. That's right. Uh, but the reality is that if Bill, uh, if uh, what's his name, well, Mike Ditka. Um, uh, <laughs> if Mike Ditka, who does the commercial for Cialis, has to look at Mrs. Ditka naked, no wonder he needs a pill. Oh, and Mr. Um, the Bob Dole. Dole. Bob Dole, same thing. Correct. So you're admitting to have to use Viagra? No. Uh, in fact, I've never used Viagra or Cialis. What I'm saying is what I use is young girls. Yes. Yeah. And, and it is much more effective and completely organic, and it saves me a fortune. Costs guys like you money, because I'm not coming to you uh, and, and getting examined and getting prescriptions and what have you. But I will tell you that it's much more effective than Viagra. Well, you want to leave your body uh, and your organ to science. It's a medical marvel. Maybe I will. I just might. The guys who know me know the truth. <laughs> Not that they've ever actually witnessed it, but they're well aware of my schedule. Yes, they are. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. <laughs> Here's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Thank you for taking my call. It's a public service. <laughs> um, I am... I am more so, but not completely, attracted to a female, um, sexually, um, intellectually. Uh, I get well, everybody's got on. their everybody's got their fetishes. But <laughs> the average man, there's a reason there's magazines like Playboy and uh, why there's porn on the internet uh, or porn on you know, your cable system or whatever. It's because yeah. the average guy uh, does not want to see how a woman would score on Jeopardy. Uh, the average guy is interested in what a woman looks like. Exactly. Well, and that, that's true, too, because I do my fair share of uh, computer screen. But um, 
uh, I guess like my ultimate goal, I guess, in like life is, is not necessarily to have a, a great conversation with some girl or have a great sex. It's, it's kind of, um, I just want to be happy in the end. And I think sometimes I don't really, I don't know if I'm going about it the right way. I mean, I've been with girls that were just smoking, like, you know, and then I'm, I end up like leaving it because I am wanting something more out of it. I feel like kind of empty with, uh, their vapidness. Um, and, why, uh, why do you spend any time talking to them? If you would uh, stop wasting your time talking to women, you would never know how vapid they are. It's very, very true. Uh, I, and I don't. Problem is, you sit there trying to talk. It's like, uh, imagine it this way. Imagine, uh, you, you know, you, you've just drunk uh, a case of Heineken, and uh, now you've stopped off at the Chevron station uh, to uh, let all that Heineken out. Because as Archie Bunker once said, you can't buy beer, you can only rent it, okay? So there you are, you're letting it all out. When you're done, do you ever look at the urinal and go, God, that was good? <sighs> I, I never do. Who do you think's going to win the election this year? <laughs> no, you don't. You zip up your fly, you wash your hands, and you get the hell out of there. <laughs> Yeah, no, now, why I, can't you I, do I this with women? I, uh, by the way, if you think women are vapid, try talking to a urinal. <laughs> yeah. Well, right? I mean, um, yeah, no, you're right. Well, um, what about, like, um, I guess, uh, do you ever plan on, I don't know, like, in the end, in the, the end product of, I guess, your life or whatever, you know, or, you know um, do you ever see yourself, like, with, like, a woman as, like, a companion or, like, a life partner? Or I don't know. Uh, I don't need that. If it happens, it happens. If yeah. it doesn't, I'll be perfectly happy. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I'll never give somebody half of my wealth. I'll never pay for their presence. No, I won't yeah. do that. Oh, yeah. No, I think actually you said it. Um, you you don't need it. Um, I, I don't. The thing. the thing is like the needing thing. Um, I, I sometimes get caught up in thinking that that's what I... That's what I need, or that's what I need to need. But that's because your mother or somebody convinced you that that's what you need. Precisely. By the um, way, are your parents still married? Yes, they are. Okay. And is your father a wimp, or is he? Uh, the, does he wear the pants of the family? He wears the pants, but uh, I'm not quite. I mean, I don't know what. He, I don't know. Honestly, in, in the unweirdest way I can say, it, I don't know like how he gets turned on by my mom. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm saying. You see, there are some guys who need a pill because look what they have to work with. True, and I don't want that. That's one thing I've, that my dad's taught me, whether he likes it or not, or meant to or not, is uh, you, you got to have something that... Uh, and we don't know if he's getting it somewhere else. Uh, true, and, and uh, yeah, we don't. I don't know that. I don't know if I want to, but um, if, he, if he did and I found out, I'd... I'd silently give him a little high five, probably, and just say, "Hey, don't mess up the family." Just don't tell me about it. Yeah, don't tell me about it. You know, I'll blow it in as well. Right. But remember, if instead of giving your money to the women you're with, you keep it for yourself, as you get older, the women stay the same age. You remember how women used to complain about uh, movie actors? They complained that guys like uh, Paul Newman and Al Pacino. And Clint Eastwood, they kept getting older, and the women in the movies kept kept being the same age or getting younger. Mm -hmm. You know why those movies were so popular? It's because that's how life is. Yeah, exactly. If you're one of those guys, the women keep getting younger. Yeah. It's just that's how it works, you know? That's how it is. The male of the species of any of any animal is always the more attractive one anyway. Well, you, you've got the money. You've got the, the, you know, the women see that as security. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll start uh, start saving up. <laughs> start saving up, John. Don't be Thank giving it. Much. Don't be giving your money to women for God's sake. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom dot com. The Tom Likas Show.